This is an extra special episode 23, Breakfast with Sundar, on Wednesday, July 24th, 2013. And now, so open. This special is hosted by Ryan Rampersad with co host Matthew Petchen. So, big Google event, hey? Big Google event today. Um, I was um, up this morning watching it live, set my uh, alarm for uh, 10. Hmm, that's, uh, that's pretty early. Yeah, I know. I... Uh, but it got hot out, because that's the first time you've been up that early for a while, isn't it? No, I actually woke up at 6, so. Did, well. The alarm didn't work, <laughs> let's just say. Oh, I was I was thinking 6 a.m., like, wow, you got little, you had to get some show notes written first. No, 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 6 a.m., yes. Yeah, no, 6 a.m. is early. I know, I, ro- well, I woke up then. You woke up super early. Yes. So you didn't pull a Sam. No. See, Sam can sleep like three days. Uh, I, I can't pull a Sam. I don't know how he yeah. does it. It's like hibernation's an at-will power for him. Yeah, so while I was waiting for the show, I was reading through the uh, WordPress source code. Uh, that was uh, very enraging. So don't do that before the show. Enraging, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I hate to see what an outrage does. You'd be surprised. <laughs> so, uh, yes, new new Google event stuff here. Um, what, what do you want to start with? How about uh, New Nexus 7? <sighs> it was amazing to see. So, um, what, what do you know about it? Well, I know... That the guy can't demo it very well. I also know that it looks very similar. See, when he was on stage holding it up, and he hold like I envisioned what an old one looked like. To the naked eye, you can't tell that it's two millimeters thicker, thinner, thinner. <laughs> right? Thinner. Right. So we we have some of the hardware specs here, and we'll we'll go through them in order, I guess. Uh, it has a um, what is called a full 1080p display, although it's 1920 by 1200, so it's a weird number. They can get away with it. They're cool. I'm just saying that's not 16 by 9. I don't know what that is. I know what it is. What? Not 16 by 9. Correct. Very well done. Um, it does have a uh, 323 PPI, uh, which is bigger than the previous generations uh, at uh, 216. So that's a pretty big step up. That's a uh, more than 100. That's a. Uh, um, is pretty, that Retina? Uh, it's that's more than Retina on the um large iPad. That's um, it's coming from the window, so it doesn't matter. Really? Yeah. That's. In- That's a weird feat. No, that's, that's a dog barking, not walking. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So, um, it also, I believe it, it's Retina, but uh, it, it's actually higher than the um, iPhone Retina display um, that is coming in at 320. So, 3 PPI higher. Good work, Google. Um, it also is a higher uh, resolution, I believe, than the um, Nexus 4. Not sure what it runs, but um, it's around 300 also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's uh, two millimeters thinner, as you mentioned. I mean, it's so visible. It's such an invisible improvement. Yeah, two millimeters. Um, they, somehow they made the bezel smaller by what they call... Subtracting a millimeter from each side. Uh, they said three millimeters, but I don't believe them. Yeah. Um, they did a, not mention that in the uh, show, but they put it on the website, of course. 50 grams lighter, so... 50 whole grams. Mm-hmm. That's a... Uh... It's pretty good. I don't know like how that'll feel, but I'm sure it'll be lighter. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, the more important things are following, such as the processor. What processor does it have? Well, for it to be any good, it has to have a Snapdragon that's right. S4 in it. That's, that's right. So it has a Snapdragon S4 Pro. That's Amazing. the exact same processor that's in the Nexus 4 currently, which is good. We know it works. Um, it's, a, as I mentioned, identical to the Nexus 4. It is not the 600. And that is not the 800. So why do you think they went with the S4 Pro? You know, I can't think of a single good reason why. I, besides they had some. I think they had plenty to use, although that has nothing to do with it because LG makes the Nexus 4, and so they're not related in any way. Um, they probably did this because it would be cheaper to use a previous-gen uh, product than the 600 because the S4 Pro and the 600 are almost identical 
just higher base clock speeds and a little bit higher uh, memory bandwidth. But and otherwise, the difference better on is the batteries. Are, yeah, and it's a little bit better on the battery. But otherwise, it's negligible um, for, for for the cost difference. Mm. So that's why yeah, it's cheaper to get a bigger battery. Right, and so that that's why the S4 Pro is a better deal for the Nexus line than getting the 600 now. The 600 or the 800 could be in the Nexus 5. That's fine. Um, new memory, so we get two gigs instead of one. That's uh, a much needed uh, relief for Nexus 7 users. Mm-hmm. Memory uh, lockup was common. Uh, dual band Wi-Fi. I know you're not a big fan of anything that isn't G, so... That that is true. Mm-hmm. Big fan of G's. I know. Uh, so that that now matches the Nexus Four mm-hmm. in its uh, Wi Fi ness. Uh, Bluetooth Four. Um, Much wanted. Um, but everyone... is it? But is it though? Like, what devices do you have that use Bluetooth? Okay, so these speakers. It's going to be so nice because it, it won't kill my battery when I'm playing my battery powered speakers at max volume. Sure about that. Everyone was saying that they wanted this super badly because it'd be amazing to have Bluetooth Four. I mean, I use my Bluetooth speakers right now without Bluetooth 4, and it doesn't make a difference. And honestly... It never will. If you have a Bluetooth speaker now, you have to buy a new one anyway that uses um, low power in order to even make use of these new APIs. So, so I don't think, think it's a big mm-hmm. deal. And every cool Nexus 7 user just didn't use Bluetooth. They beamed their files over. Well, yeah, but uh, no. Uh, now it also features HDMI out, although they didn't say if that's through the... Micro USB port, or if it's a dedicated port, we'll have to see. Like until I get one physically. Um, what What do you think? Well, they didn't show it at the conference, um, but then again, I was in the back, so it was hard to see. Well, you know, that's what happens. To you. Yeah. Why didn't you bring binoculars? I thought you went everywhere at those. No, I, I don't actually own a set. I don't think I borrow yours when there's people at the park that yeah. I want to mm-hmm. observe yeah. in their natural environment. Um, but I, yes. I don't bring those around. You should. Um, yes. It also features NFC, so you can still beam and bump or whatever they call it. Beaming. Beaming, it's whatever. It's officially called beaming. Is it? That's so dumb. I like to beam people. Well, you do that. Uh, it also features wireless charging, just like the Nexus 4. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know those three little like gold like things on the side of the Nexus 7? That nobody knows what they do. Yeah, nobody knows what they do. I think those are gone now, so... Snowing. Whatever they whatever they did, nobody still knows. Yeah, when I d- dissected my Nexus Seven, I had I saved them, but what, I didn't know what, what to do were with them. they. I don't know. They yeah. looked like gold, and <laughs> right as I mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, so allegedly, uh, the new Nexus Seven is getting nine hours of movie playback and ten hours of web browsing. So that's an hour better in each category, which means nothing. Yeah. Um, I also want to mention that those numbers seem irrelevant. In the face of the MacBook Air numbers that came out last month at WWDC, you know, uh, 12 and, what, 15, you know, 9 and 12 hours for a real laptop? Why can't a tablet do this? Yeah, and so, and these aren't tested numbers. These are what they're saying. Yeah, well, that's and what we they're... always know that those are theoretical and right. never reach. And so we got the 9 and 12 numbers from The Verge and from Engadget and from others. Like, they were varying battery lives. Mm -hmm. Um, but they were all really high. So we don't know what this will give us. Now, some people are saying that the Android 4.3 update um, changed battery life on the Nexus 4. So we'll see if that actually makes a difference, too. In a good way or a bad way? In a good way. Because sometimes updates, uh, yeah, Mm -hmm. got to roll back. Oh, man, tough. Um, We're also getting a 1.2 camera in the front, megapixel, uh, which is what we had before on the Nexus 7, but uh, we're also getting a 5 megapixel rear camera. So no word on the quality yet. Yeah. Um, It won't be as good as as the Nexus, I mean the iPad 4 camera, of course. But I just want to talk about that old, so they're still using the same front-facing camera. I believe so. But they moved it. Did they? Yes, it's not dead. It oh yeah, dead it's center on the, on the top. Yeah, it's off center. And then yeah. they off centered it. So when you're holding it right in front of you, like when you're screen chatting with somebody, because people do that all the time. Well, I mean, I it, mean, it just seems weird that they moved it there. It was in a great spot, and so, they gave symmetry to the thing. So I was going to say, you know, I was at uh, Menards recently, and I used Hangouts to show my mom the code hooks that she wanted. Mm-hmm. And with the Nexus 7, I couldn't do that anyway because I wouldn't have, you know, internet. So it doesn't matter. But in theory, being off center doesn't matter. I mean, it's off center on the phone, so you you just deal with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but a tablet, you'd think that they wouldn't move it. I well, mean, because it there'd be a... so much space, you could put it anywhere. Kind of. You know, in the middle. 
Well, that's fine. I don't mind. I mean, you'd always think that the tablets would get the better processors and the better bands first. No. Not playing catch up with the phones. No, I don't think so. Why? Because that's been the trend that every manufacturer has been doing? Yep. I still don't get it. I don't mind. Um, I mean, honestly, I don't need Haswell in my phone or in my tablet because I'm not Microsoft. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soon the- those RTs are going to be 100 bucks each, just like the HP touchpads. I'll buy one. Me too. Yeah. I'd buy two. No, I just want one. Uh, they're also featuring stereo audio. So it's not just a single band on the bottom. There's actually a speaker grill on the top and a speaker grill on the bottom. And it's two separate speakers. Now, if you hold your phone in land, I mean your tablet, your new Nexus 7 in landscape, you cover up the speakers. So when you're watching a movie, you can't actually hold the device. So cool. You wouldn't want to anyways. You, you're on to get tired. Right. It's heavy. But it's 50, it's grams, 50 grams heavier. Oh. When you think about it. Uh, 50 grams heavier than nothing. Okay. For starters. Yeah. Uh, there's an LTE option now. Um, Finally. I'll tell you the price, but first let me tell you what bands or what carriers it supports. AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. What are we missing? Softblox supported Sprint. Yes. We were missing Sprint. Uh, no Sprint support yet, if ever. Doubting ever. Why do you think that is? Um, honestly, I don't know, because... I don't know either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it could have something to do with not finding a radio that supports all four, which is odd, so I don't really know. Now, one thing to point out here is that there is no 3G support for this. So, it's only LTE. There's no L- uh, 3G radio. So, if for but instance... Sprint has an LTE network. They do. It's rolling out. But what I'm saying is, tr- tr- traditionally, when somebody says, with 4G support or LTE support, they also include 3G in it. But not in this case. So the the, mm-hmm. the, the 3G that you typically had is gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have sizing and pricing numbers. Would you like to go over those? Uh, let's go with over them. Yes! Yes. I'm ready for it! Well, you'll never believe. They're not starting out with 8 this time. <gasps> 8 uh, gigabytes is 16. 16 is the baseline uh, size. For what price? How many guests? I don't know. Three hundred dollars? No, no, no. That's too much. No, uh, that's too much. That's too much. That's too much. How about two twenty nine? Two twenty nine. I'd say that sounds impossibly low for getting all this awesomeness. No, I think that that's that's actually right. That's right. Yes. Uh, for thirty two gigs, you can pay two sixty nine. So not that much more. You know, forty dollars more. Or so. Um, uh, no, 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 they should have followed the Apple pricing scheme where if they double more. it, it's a hundred and at least yeah. hundred and ten. Yeah, um, for thirty-two plus LTE, uh, you do have to pay quite a bit more, uh, three forty-nine. But consider that to get an LTE iPad Mini, you'd have to pay four twenty-nine or four fifty, whereas uh, you only have to pay three fifty-nine or three fifty for the thirty-two gig uh, LTE model of the Nexus Seven. So, I, I think in general the Theory is that this is a better deal. And it's still a lot cheaper than the uh, Surface Pro, even with the touch cover. What is a Surface Pro? What are you talking about? Those, those tablets that everybody wanted. So I wanted to show this mean. picture. This is a picture of the iPad Mini and the Nexus, new Nexus 7 next to each other. And the iPad Mini has such a different kind of screen. And it looks so funny next to the Nexus 7. You know, it kind of looks like one of those, um, what were those things called? The, not tabs. This, this weird long... Those are called sticks. Yes, those <laughs> sticks. Um, I forget what they're called. Galaxy tabs or something. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Like it looks so weird and long and unusable compared Which to one? A, the the new Android. Okay, Nexus <laughs> the left wrist one. Left Nexus wrist. seven. Yeah. Nexus seven. Uh huh. Yeah, you know, I I don't mind it. I I like the smaller screen, but th- this looks so much better. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you like to see an ad? I think it's about time to play an ad. Uh, so this is the ad they played. Um, during the uh, event, this is um, showing off the wonderful features of the Nexus 7. What what do we call this new Nexus 7? Do we know? Nexus 7 or No, no, no. I hope not. That's not acceptable. 7.50. I, I think we'll just keep calling it the new Nexus 7. Well, I think we can, I can do that. I mean, we, we're used to that now, right? Yeah. yeah. Google, what is glossophobia? Glossophobia, or speech anxiety, is the fear of public speaking. the time to speak. 
speak the truth frankly and boldly. This is no unsolvable problem if we face it wisely and courageously. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Question for you. Hi. Did he time travel? Because he was called up at the start, right? Right. Um. No, I think like it was like a, that was the first day of the week, and then you know, like it was staggered days. So in the so, in the video for Evan, the audio for, for in this in the video for audio listeners. So all of you, um, there was a classroom where uh the kids had to uh, do uh, like a presentation kind of speech like thing, and presumably on the first day he was not called up. But other people were, and he was freaking out, and so he looked up what that was called, and then proceeded to not suck. Because he had an X of seven. Exactly. Right. Go buy one, you'll get a girl. I think that's what the commercial was going for. Exactly, which makes me need to get one. Although it's funny, it's funny, because if I, th- I think if I type in those search terms, huh? I'm doing the same thing, I need advice. Google! Now what do you, what do you, uh, 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 I don't get what he got. So I get, how do I love thee, get a passport, live without you, get you alone? <laughs> okay, turning that off. Um, hmm. Yeah. Did you get anything? Uh, I got a wiki how. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, I'll put it in the show notes, and you can read it later, because it, it has caricatures that are funny. It's got a guy who says, we'll work for a girlfriend. Okay, then. Well, um, I suppose the next piece of the puzzle is to talk about 4.3. Android 4.3 came out today. And um, what is it called? Jelly Bean. Which fills you with? Acceptance, contentment, <laughs> Acceptance complacency. Acceptance is your first answer. <laughs> really. I don't mind. Um, so, Google has changed the way they name things. So... Major releases get names now, and minor releases stick with the same name. Yeah, and but so they did that with uh, four point two, right? And four point one. And four point one. Yes. Yes. So they so they've done it twice. Uh huh. But what was the name of this event? Uh this was breakfast with Sundar. A food themed press conference, well, and did, we what, knew no, that no, a new no, Android no, was I w- coming. I would out. not say it was food themed. I'd say it was food timed. Food timed. Okay, fine. Food was in the name, and I'm like. A new Android's bound to come out today. It's going to have some kind of dessert that you'd have with breakfast. Which would be what? I had no idea. <laughs> I was looking forward to it so badly. So you could learn something new. I see. I know. I mean, I'm not educated enough in the art of food Well, and well you would pastries. know since you were there that it had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Breakfast. That's why I was the angriest at the airport. When I called you, when I, as soon as I was getting off my plane and waiting for my sister to get off her plane, we both got back at the same time. She got back from France. I got back from, uh, down south. And just yeah. so you know, I've got nothing to complain about. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you should, you, sh- you should be more rage filled. What? Oh. Um. Now yeah, that, that, that fills me with rage when you turn the lights on like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I struck back. Didn't work. Doesn't work. Oh, there it goes. So, the uh, it's still called Jelly Bean. It's still it's called not Jelly a big Bean. deal. It's okay. Uh, presumably, we'll get um, the next one in November, but we don't know. So, what did we get with Jelly Bean 4.3? Wait, wait. November? There's going to be another? Could be. Five. We don't know. Traditionally, when they launch the new Nexus phone, they launch the new operating system. You think 4.4 will... Or it'll either be another minor or it'll be a major. Traditionally, they launch one with the phone also. Mm, I'll take bets later. Like 4.2 came out with the, uh, what is this thing called? Um, 4. Yeah, Next that. 4. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, features. What came out? Um. Well, he demoed a few things, but there's only a, one thing that really stuck out. Um, I know you have a whole bunch of things, but I'm not going by what you have written. I noticed. <laughs> All right. New multi-user features. Like? Logins. 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, I've always had this issue with multiple logins on devices, so... Remember back in the day the with XP? XP? Yep. Uh, and I and was, then switching between would just kill your uh, everything. I was adamant... Kill my everything again, huh? It, it would. So I was always adamant about anyone who used uh, multiple accounts that they were fundamentally wrong and uh, torturing their poor little computer hard drive and everything. Uh, because multiple accounts is a travesty. You don't do that. Well, but, back in the day, you'd only set your desktop to something that was one pixel. Yeah, the problem? Because it was torture on your everything. Yes. Yes. So one was. account, one pixel, and one everything else. Right. Well, uh, I guess on a tablet it's a little bit different. So restricted accounts is the new feature today for multiple users. And so what it is, is it's basically a version of parental controls, but it's a little bit more uh, app-centric. So if you're a parent and you have a kid, what you can do is you can buy whatever you want in the app. So like if it were a racing game, you could buy three tracks, you know, for 99 cents each or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then when the kid uses their account, only those three tracks will appear. The other tracks that are purchasable won't appear, and the ability to even purchase things in general won't appear in the app. So that kind of um, feature set is really nice, and I think it's a direct slam against Apple, who has been sued multiple times for allowing in-app purchases to go unguarded and uh, unconfirmed by the parents. Yeah. And the Kindle Fire has had this feature for yes. months now, mm-hmm. and they've been showing that off heavily in their adage. They uh, they have, and then the, the, that's a very clear market for um, these types of devices. It's much cheaper than an iPad, so it's good that Google is doing it. Mm-hmm. So we also have um, some new graphics with OpenGL 3. Yeah. I'm, so do you know what? I don't know too much about that. It doesn't mean much to a user. No, no, no. But gamers are going to flock to this because everyone wants to game on this tablet. Uh, I'm pretty sure no one does. I agree fully. Okay, good. Uh, we'll move along. Whatever easier t- input text input is, what is that? Do we know what that is? That is a good question. Because what it is. So it was on the slide today on what changed in 4.3. We don't know what changed other than easier text input. Now, that could mean that touchscreen interaction is faster or more fluid or the keyboard is better, but the keyboard is just coupled now. Because it's just an app. Hmm. So we don't really know what that means. No, we do not. No. Um, there's new DRM Thank APIs. You for saying it. Okay. Uh, so we don't really know too much about them other than that they now support high quality video and audio. Um, now, so one instance of that is used in the, uh, what is that called? The uh, Netflix app. So Netflix app can now use 1080p video. Which is funny because nobody has bandwidth to stream that anyway, so I don't really know how that works. We got the LTE now. You know, it's probably faster on LTE, honestly. Yeah, I was I was at um, Little Caesars waiting for my pizza the other day, and I got nine down. That's uh, it's pretty good. I know. It's faster than your pizza was coming. I had to wait four minutes for it. It told me I had to wait twenty once. Well, you were busy that one day, and you I left. wanted one cheese, mm-hmm. and they said twenty minutes, bro. And I'm like, give me a sausage, because I'm out of here, bro <laughs> Really? No, nah, I didn't say bro or but uh, okay. yeah. Okay, good. I just said I need food. And well, uh, here, here's another thing that would be dear, dear to your heart. Background Wi-Fi location support. Oh, so that just means that uh, it runs in the background, and it would just work as I want it to work. So if I have navigation out, it'll run in the background and be good, right? No. No, so so what does it mean? I'm stupid and I need to be enlightened. Well, I'll tell you what it means. So let's say that you're uh, using your phone and um, you're using an app that would like to know your location. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, what an app might do is it'd say, hey, is it okay if I turn on GPS so I can figure out where you are? And you might say yes. Well, guess what that'll do to your battery? It'll kill it because GPS is a power-hungry monster. Alternatively, you could use Wi-Fi to guess where you are. So based on the access points around you, Google somehow knows where you are, which is cool. I agree. And so that's what it's going to do now. But it'll do this in the background. But there's more. So it will um, periodically turn Wi-Fi on and off if it is off to figure out where you are. So even if you have explicitly turned Wi-Fi off and this feature is enabled, it will turn it back on. Just to know where you are. See, I am so stupid and unenlightened that that sounds like it sounds like super spying. Yeah, pretty much. Um, you you can turn it off. Now, it is on by default in 4.3, so if you don't want it, you have to turn it off explicitly. Uh, good luck doing that, because I don't even know where that menu is. 
it it probably every after every update it would reset to, to defaults. Yes, because there's only like one update per like Android release. Uh, Maybe two. Well, they always have updates. Not many. Very few. And so there's a lot of things I want to delete off my phone. It was like, here, delete the updates. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, your Gmail updated like five times today. Did it? Uh, that happens sometimes. Mm. Like, my, my thing keeps on updating. And mm. I, I set it up to Not, never. Yeah. Good choice. Um, so all of this non-feature feature stuff is coming to Nexus devices starting today. I have not gotten mine yet on the Nexus 4. Um, I hope you do before Friday. I hope so, too. But I doubt it. They said it would be a while. Like, you know, a few days. Um, also, Google Play Experience devices. So the uh, new, um, whatever what are those called, uh, HTC One and the Galaxy S4 that are available in the Play Store, mm-hmm. the uh, Google ones, those will be getting their updates soon, but probably by August. So, like, not this week, not next week, but sometime in early August. Like, a, soon. It'll okay. take a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. So just like that shipping date. Yeah. Yeah. It's only three weeks off. Um. In addition to those things, so uh, Android-related but not about the core operating system, um, the Play Store will be getting textbooks this fall. So starting in August, apparently that's fall, um, textbooks will start coming in. They have five publishers, so pretty much any college textbook you want. You and they're can, all riddled with DRM. You might be able to get it. It is DRM'd fully and up and down. Uh, and newly uh, this year, they've DRM'd left and right DRM. That that's part of the new API. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, now, so they don't say that you can read this on the web. Like, if you had just like Chrome, like on a desktop, that would seal the deal for me because I would love to be able to use the thing on my laptop or on my desktop, like side by side with Word or something, not on the little tiny seven inch screen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are also making a new gaming app. So it's Google Play Games for Android. I don't think the for Android is in the title, but that's what they're calling it on stage. And so it's a separate app that is very much like Game Center. Um, Which is a travesty and should be erased from mankind's right. memory. So what I tweeted when this when they said this, it, I said, oh, Google Play Games will come out and be ignored just like Game Center was a week after. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so in it, they s- show you how achievements are tracked and how you can... Um, discover new games and invite other players to games that you're playing and stuff. Uh, ter- horrible things that nobody wants. So I think that's pretty much it in the Android section. Yeah. Um, so what's next? Now, here's where the first new thing comes The surprise. In. The surprise. Yeah. So we got, we got an, a spec boost. We knew that was coming. Mm-hmm. We knew there was going to be some kind of Android thing. Right. But what I did not know, because no Best Buy hadn't leaked it to me yet, was that there's going to be something new. And it's called... The Chromecast. The Chromecast. Now, Not I, the Chrome stick. Now, the Chromecast. I admit, I will say in this episode at least four more times, Chrome stick, because it's a stick and not a cast. This is a podcast, not a stick. So the difference should be clear. See, but see, but your Chrome stick can cast things to TVs and magical things. Yeah, you know, no, no, that's Casting. not. Casting. No, it's, 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 but it, it's, it comes with its own cloud. Okay, well, let's talk about it. So this was the surprise of the event. Uh, of the event. Um, so what is it? It's a dongle. Yes, it is a dongle. Mm-hmm. It, um, it supports your well, HDMI. Well, it's yes. Yeah, so you plug it into your HDMI, and then you plug the other end into a USB AC adapter. Or can you just stick it into a laptop or something? No. So you need to plug it into HDMI, and you need to plug the other end into USB. You need both connections simultaneously. So that USB can that be draw power through a laptop, or does it have to be through the wall? Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I don't know, but if it's an old laptop, probably not. Like, you know, it needs to be enough power. Like, should I buy a laptop? To... You're probably going to need mm-hmm. some amps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's, uh, it's weird. Why don't just have a, it's a TV. There should be outlets by TVs. Well, there should be. Mm-hmm. I don't really know what they were thinking. But it's the, the power for it is actually just a USB port. Yeah. Well, they don't say what power that needs, though. Like, there are some, you know, like, my, the phone adapter that we have here under the desk for charging our devices while we're here, it has a really low amp rating, so it well, provides a no power, whereas like an, uh, like an iPad charger provides a lot more power. Yes. Yeah, so we don't know what this power requirement is. Yeah. And uh, we don't know yet. And But there's a lot of things we don't know about this, and we'll get to that as we keep on going on. Mm-hmm. So it's similar to Airplane, how it works. So uh, if you have local things, it will send your local things to the you know, TV that you plug it into. But 
if it's something that can stream from a server, like externally, so for instance, YouTube, ha ha ha, streaming YouTube, ha ha ha, um, it will try to do that. So if you wanted to play a YouTube video, you, you, you just, you know, go to the YouTube app, you click the cast button, as they call it, and it will play. In? Full definition? What? I don't know. No, in the presentation, they're like, so it's on your device, and you hit cast, and now it's going to go to the cloud, and it's going to go to your device. Right. Well, so what they were saying is that it's not mirroring your display. That's what they were pointing out. Whereas uh, AirPlay would simply mirror what's on your screen on the um, iPad or iPhone or whatever. It just sounded so fishy. When it's like, well, that's what cloud. that's what they were pointing out. That's what they were trying to make the difference of. It may, maybe it didn't come out that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that is a very significant thing because for a lot of people, their Wi-Fi networks aren't that good. Like, so if they're living in an apartment or where there's a lot of Wi-Fi networks, like in a dorm, um, sending stuff by Wi-Fi is not very good where sending stuff from, you know, the internet to the device is easier for some reason. Mm -hmm. Um, so... Uh, it doesn't stream from the device if it doesn't have to. We mentioned that. It will work on your Android device and your iOS, iOS device, which is interesting. Very. Um, we know how it works. We read the API, but we can't talk about it because you might get sued. Exactly. Right. Uh, but we'll, we're get, going to. we'll get to that. Um, and you, you can now, so you can also do it from your desktop. Which is a nice feature. Which Everybody is probably the, which is probably the most important feature for us here because that's all we use here. Mm -hmm. These these phones and tablets are jokes compared to our. It's so jokey. Just things happen to them. Yes. Well, you just throw it at your hat. Um, so on the desktop, you have to use Chrome. Obviously, you can't use Firefox. Can't use IE. Can't use Opera. You have to use Chrome, and you also need to download for this now. special extension. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what the extension does. It probably just communicates with the server API or something. And tells Google what, what kind of things you like doing so they know what to improve on later. Right. While they're watching you. Mm -hmm. Right. Why is my webcam on? Oh, I don't know. Um, in addition to that, though, it also works on the Chromebooks. Wait, I misspoke. I started. Chromebook Pixel. Works on one Chromebook. Really? The most expensive $1,400 piece of crap you could ever purchase. One Chromebook. So Ian Buck will be very angry later today when he finds this out because his little Chromebook, which is a joke, will not work with this feature. But if he would have bought any other netbook that could yeah, put Chrome Yeah, Windows, on yeah, it, we're fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, makes you wonder. I don't really know what they're going for there. Yeah. Uh, although, it, so in the presentation, it said most Windows PCs and most Macs. If it runs Chrome and can have an extension. Well, I, I don't know what they were, I don't know what the requirement is. We don't know. Presumably, if it runs Chrome, it should work. Although, mm. if the Chromebook, you know, uh, thing is to be believed and it requires the Pixel and the Pixel has an i5 in it, what is the requirement? For the Windows PCs also. So, like, what? You need graphics acceleration or you need something. Um, you need some threshold of memory, some threshold of something. So, we don't know what it is. We'll find out eventually, probably. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not. Um, so, you can you can interact with what you push to your TV. So, if you were pushing a video, you could change the volume. You could seek through the video. Ha, 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 ha. Seek through a video that buffered already. Ha. Huh. What that is that's that? fun. No, it doesn't happen. You could pause it. You could change the volume. You could do pretty much anything you wanted. Through what? Through your phone. Through your phone. Mm -hmm. So your phone becomes the remote. Your phone becomes the remote or your tablet or whatever you have. Okay. Or even your Chrome, um, you know, your, just your browser. So whatever whatever you have will will do it. That is cool. It is very nice. Um, we'll see if it works. Like, if there's a lot of latency, it might not be very useful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so they also said that it still allows device multitasking. So if you do it on your laptop, obviously you can do it because it's just doing in Chrome. But traditionally, when you do it with AirPlay on an iOS device, if you leave AirPlay on that app and go somewhere else, it will stop. So it doesn't do that with this Chromecast. You can just go and, you know, check your email or That's Google something. That's yeah. Good. Uh, it, it actually makes this a useful feature. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So it lets you stream your music to your nice... TV or your video, and then also browse. Mm -hmm. no, no. Uh, so as we mentioned, it can send audio and video, but also it can send tabs. Tabs. So if you have Chrome, either on your iOS device, your uh, Google device, or your Chrome on your desktop, you can send a tab. Whatever's on the tab. All the tab. So, for instance, you could send some Flash if you're on a desktop. Really? Mm -hmm. That's cool. No, it, it's just mirroring. It's just a video stream locally. So it's not a big deal, but it's pretty cool that you can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, did I mention something about uh, the price? 
We have not talked about that yet. Would you like to hear about the price? Well, so, judging by all the features and stuff, I'd say, what's the Roku Lite? $65? I think it's either 70 or 79-ish. Yeah, so I guess they try to undercut the Roku Lite. And well, what I, was thinking, 60. what I was thinking is, so the Nexus 7 base model mm-hmm. is 229 so it's 230. 230. So thank you. Good. So I was thinking that why don't why not price this to make it at even 300? So you buy both and it'd be you know 300 dollars. It'd be like you know a nice little set for a nice so price. So 70 bucks. Right. So 70 bucks, 69 dollars. So we're it's you know pretty good. We're only 10 dollars different from each other. Right. So we we both must be somewhere in between. No, we're both wrong completely. It's really? 35 dollars. 35 dollars. 35 dollars. Where can't I get one? Well, I can't get it on Amazon yet because apparently they're sold out. But they just went on sale today? Yep. How how fast did they sell out? Pretty fast on Amazon. And so it takes two days shipping to get it minimum, mm-hmm. right? F- 40-ish reviews? Yeah, 40-ish reviews already. Hmm, yeah, makes you wonder how fishy uh, those are. What are what's this, this review is like, why are you guys writing reviews? <laughs> what is wrong with these people? Yes, so nobody has this yet unless you're like, you know, The Verge and you've got a review unit. It's just been completely skewed already. They um, gotta do something about this crap. They won't though. Um, hopefully people will just mark those views down. Um, so you can buy it through the Play Store today, Amazon when they get it in stock, Best Buy when they get it in stock, but, uh, you can also buy it in stores on the 28th, which is next Tuesday, I believe. No, maybe? I don't know when the 20th is. I don't, I would look it up, but then I'd have to care. Hmm. You might now. You work, so you, you have to care about these dates. Oh, the 28th is Sunday, so not too long from now. Yeah. So, um, the, the Chrome stick is cool, but there are some odd shipping dates on the Chrome store additionally. So it says it ships soon, but in three to four weeks. So we don't really know what that means. It could be almost sold out there too, which would be a bit bad. Just horrible. Very bad. Yeah. So either they didn't make enough or a lot of people wanted it. It's only $35. I mean, that's, uh, it's like getting a pie. It's cool. It's so cheap. And for what it does, if it works, it's very reasonable. Yeah. So one of the things they said in the video or on the stream today is they priced it at this low price point so that you could buy it for every TV in your house. So instead of buying your $100 Apple TV, you buy this and the devices you already have, it's not so expensive that you couldn't buy multiple. You could get three for the price of one Apple TV, mm-hmm. basically. So question for you. Mm-hmm. If it ever became in stock, would you get one for that TV? Yep. Would you get one for the TV upstairs? Nope. Well, I'm only getting one. Somebody else can pay for the other one. Oh, you couldn't just you could just tell your mom it's sixty seventy dollars. Oh, oh, you're right. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get there. Okay. Um, I only need one. That one. <laughs> Good point. Uh, like she'll never be able to use this because she doesn't know what an internet is. Uh, plus, you have your smart TV upstairs, yeah. which can already do the Netflix, yeah. not 1080. No, actually, it will do 1080. Oh, well. That's not a problem. That's good. Yeah. Good, good. You know, so my mom's actually been using that, so she just goes straight from the TV to get Netflix now. She doesn't even use the computer. Yeah, that's it's, what the Netflix button's for. It's much easier than going to the computer, because the mouse, even though it's good, not that good. Yeah. Yeah. So we also ha- have some stuff to talk about about the API. Yeah. So the story came out right away, and then very soon after, some people started posting on Slashdot that there are some... Weird licensing restrictions. And then they put a link in to the page that this wasn't on. Exactly. And then I had to search around for it by reading the API. So let me, let me tell you what this says. The Google Cast API li- library support the development of Android, iOS, and Chrome sender applications. The things that go from the phone or the desktop to the device. Yeah, we we found the code for that. Like, right. They, it's pretty easy to do. It yes, like. very, very simple. It's all in JavaScript. It's very easy. Mm-hmm. And then it goes on to say, and the development of the receiver, receiver applications in JavaScript written for the Chrome browser. So that's the thing that the Chrome stick is running and that will do whatever you tell it to do. We're, we're fine so far. Right. And then right below that it says, you may not publicly distribute or ship your Google Cast application without written permission from Google per the terms of service described below. Written permission. So, so you need some written permission. Per application. So, so it goes on. This SDK and the API libraries within are for development purposes only. You may not, and this is in bold capital letters, publicly distribute code containing this SDK or referencing these APIs, the S is lowercase, which is funny, without a written agreement with Google allowing you to do so. Why can't we all build things together? And get along and just be open. 
Why? Why? Why can't we? I don't know. Because you're doing it too. <laughs> yeah, I know. So by accessing the download links below, you indicate that you have read and accepted the Google API terms and further agree not to publicly distribute code containing the SDK and the APIs accessed through the links below unless and until you enter a written agreement with Google providing such permission. If you wish to discuss shipping your apps, please write us at Chromecast-updates at Google.com. Do you know how much, much of a problem that is? So there's two reasons they could be doing this. Either they're uh, being evil or this is such an early API that they don't want people to ship apps and then have something break catastrophically. I think that the latter might be more likely. I think so too. Like, I don't know if they said this was beta, but it does say developer preview right on the top. So we're developers. I mean, I don't disagree, but if that's the case, that's a fine reason. It just should be stated a little bit more politely. Like, please don't ship this stuff yet because it's not ready. Not if you ship, you die kind of thing. I think the if you ship, you die is is pretty clear. Like, it's clear, but it's mean. When you're ambiguous, things happen. Oh, you're going to pull a Torvald, right? Pretty much. Okay. That's fine with me. So, all in all, what do you think of this event? Was it as hyped as it needed to be? I needed a breakfast out of it. You, uh, I don't even know. Yeah, but honestly, this Chromecast captured my heart. I need one. I need two. $35 is really reasonable for yeah. what uh, you can do. Yeah, I mean, like four Wonder hours of work and I can go buy one. Do you think you could hook it up to just a regular HDMI monitor? you think that would work? Or does it have to be TV? I think you could hook it up to a regular monitor. Could I turn it on with, uh, could I turn my monitor on with the new HDMI thing? So one of the things that the Chrome, uh, the Chromecast. Chrome stick. Uh, Chrome stick. It should be called Chrome stick. I don't know. Chromecast is a name for a protocol, not a physical thing. Just so you know. Or the app that casts it to the. Whatever. Well, yeah. apparently somehow it knows to turn, or it knows how to turn your TV on without you using a remote. And it's not just displaying a black screen when it's not in use. It's TV's flat off. Right. And so, it can bring it and the LED's on. on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we don't really know too much about that. Now, I didn't know HDMI could do that. Did you know that it could do I that? don't think it can. Yeah. So maybe, I think somebody's lying. Yeah. It, it could just be the TV that they were using. So we don't know. Um, so what do you think about the new Nexus 7? Um, I like the... I paid 250 for mine plus tax. Mm -hmm. Um which was, I thought, pretty reasonable. Very reasonable. Um, it's only gotten cheaper. It actually got more expensive, so. I would never get the 32 again. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you so get the cheaper. Six, if you get the 16, though, cheaper. and you pay tax on Roosevelt, it's still 250 Yeah. Yeah, so. But yeah, just I saying. get the I get the iPixels. Yes, you do get the iPixels. Um, yeah, I really like the Nexus 7. I might get one uh, someday, some year, maybe. We'll see. But I'm the new Nexus Seven. Yes, not that piece out. of crap. Okay. Um, the what do you think about Android four point three? Is it uh, nothing eye catching? Nothing really. really to write home about, um, e except for that um, background Wi Fi mm -hmm. and uh, the DRM textbooks and the DRM APIs for high quality video and that other um, oh if you if you make an app you die. Now I should really go find my Twitter stream because I tweeted about all of this in real time and I made significant fun about like. Oh, introducing new Derm APIs because we're so open and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nothing. Okay. So, so not only that, like, so you know how their big thing is openness and transparency, and that's all work together, right? So, so that brings up the question: Why did they make this Chrome Stick thing and using their own proprietary protocol, whatever it is? It, I mean, it's doing something in the background somehow over Wi-Fi. Why exactly. did they do that versus Miracast? Because Miracast was the open standard that everybody was supposed to be implementing. I bet they funded it, and I bet they'll continue to fund Miracast yeah. and then keep their stuff on the side. Right. That sounds exactly like it. Well, uh, people do that apparently to avoid antitrust, but that's not a good reason either. Not for this. Nobody's going to use this for a long time anyway. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think this was a good event. I will um, look forward to next week's event. Yeah. You ready for that one? I I don't know. I'm pretty worn out after this one, I, getting uh, some jet lag. You stop traveling. Well, so you went to the West Coast this week. You're going to have to go to the East Coast uh, next week because that's in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that'll be for the Moto X. Oh, so I made a joke. So today the live stream cut out right at the end, right mm -hmm. after the video that we saw played. 
And normally at the end of events, the host, so in this case, Sundar Pichai, would come out and say a few words about how revolutionary and innovative they were. Um, and saying how both operating systems, because they have two, normally would be opposed. But in this case, because they're Google, they're together and revolutionary. Well, they didn't do that. The, the video just cut out, the stream ended, and people left. Well, what I joked was, on the screens, everybody's seeing a picture of the Moto X, and they're all getting NDA'd. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I joked about. Yeah, well, it was a good show. Yep, so where can we find you on the internet? You can find me at MatthewPetchell.com, and you can hit me up with an email at YourDreamGuy um, at NexusLabs.org. And I'm re- reading this wiki how right now. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm still on this wiki how Okay, thing. well, by the time we do next week's special, you'll have mastered the aspects of mastery. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, of course, you can find me, Ryan Ramper said, just about everywhere. You can find me live tweeting various events on the Twitter, Ryan Amar, and also on the Google+, Plus, not tweeting live events because that's not Twitter. But you can find is basically where I blog because that's where I put all today's links and other fun things I find on the Internet. I don't even know how you find me on Google+. Plus. Just find me on Google+. Plus. Good luck with that. Um, Yeah. Have a good one. I don't know if I was that rich. I think it was 128. Still, I mean, you could have got a new board for that. I wasn't podcasting at the time. Could have been podcasting at the time. Oh, I should have been. I should have started this in high school. That would have been better. Yeah, that, you would have talked to girls and you know, do all sorts of stuff. I tried doing that. It didn't work out. No, 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 no. See, when I tutor, coach, and talk to girls all the time, then they know you. Ha! <laughs> I'm never going to forget that. <laughs> I still, Ever. I still don't even know who she is. <laughs> I can't, she, was, no. she was my friend. She was cute. And I talked to her every I day un- for I understand. entire year. And, oh, hi, like it. Oh, Ryan. <laughs> hi. <laughs> exactly. Just like that. Still have no idea.